Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India We take it as axiomatic that uh, atoms and molecules cannot react unless they collide with each other uh, and we are primarily looking at chemical reactions we try to emphasize this all the time. Uh, so essentially we are looking at electronic exchanges and not uh, going all the way down to the nuclei of course there are exceptions to uh, uh, situations like where we have to have uh, uh, molecules and uh, atoms collide with each other you could have uh, thermal the thermal reactions that are sensitive to temperature or th in, in thermal response like decomposition thermal decomposition or you could have photosensitive reactions and so on okay. So let us now um, look at what is called the law of mass action we will just proceed uh, systematically here. So as an example if you now take uh, the hydrogen oxygen reaction um, so we could now think about a, a change in the number of moles um, of um, hydrogen in terms of a decrease and therefore we have a negative one um, could, could be equal to a change in the number of moles of oxygen divided by a negative half because for every one mole of hydrogen that decreases we have only half a mole of uh, oxygen that decreases and that could be equal to then the change in the number of moles of uh, uh, water divided by plus 1 to indicate that this is a gain as opposed to a loss for the other two. So the sign uh, and the, the value in the denominator for these are actually derived from whether they are reactants or products and uh, you could also now look at uh, what is the what is the loss relatively speaking one mole of hydrogen is lost with half a mole of oxygen that is lost to produce one mole of water so that is what that is what we write. So if you now consider a general reaction like an algebraic form that we have considered uh, before uh, except we now uh, write nu i single prime script m i uh, gives sigma i equals 1 n nu i double prime um, script m i. So previously we had a n i single prime and an n i double prime we have switched to nu i suddenly we became Greek yeah uh, there is a reason for this we will now get into uh, the difference between what is called as a uh, order of the reaction and molecularity of the reaction. So uh, if you are now thinking something like half it refers to something like number of moles but if you are looking at a reaction that is happening at the molecular level you cannot have like half a molecule react with uh, another molecule okay when you are looking at molecules and atoms colliding with each other right. So half a molecule cannot uh, react as if it is half hearted or something like that right so a molecule reacts it molecule reacts. So we will try to make the distinction over there but as far as what we are doing now since we have a half here you could stick to our notion of number of moles for, for the coefficients here okay which could be now taken care of by a new i single prime and a new i double prime as before which, which was done by ni, NI single prime and ni double prime. And if you want to now write a, a set of equations like this this is actually a set of equations this is actually a set of three equations for three reactants uh, three, three, three species there. So similarly you could for n uh, species you could now write n, uh, n, rea n equations right and the way we would do is since, since we have actually accounted for all the n species on either side with a nu i single prime and a nu i double prime. And we, we know that if, if, if uh, something is a reactant the nu i single prime is non-zero and uh, the nu i double prime is zero and if something is a product it is nu i single prime is zero and nu i double prime is non-zero. So taking that into account you simply have to take its double prime minus its single prime to get you the right sign as well you can get a negative sign if this is zero and that is non-zero okay if, if, uh, and you get a positive sign if this is uh, um, uh, non zero and this is zero uh, it does not have to be exactly zeros as well you could have like excess reactant excess reactant that goes to the product side which will be of a lesser value uh, in terms of stoichiometric coefficient than on the right hand side then you get a positive 
value so negative value here as well okay so all that stuff will be taken care of by this notation and then what do you do with all these things that are equal to each other okay so we now say all these things that are equal to each other could finally be equal to a elemental change in a in a in a quantity called psi yeah so we now say this is equal to d psi where psi refers to psi refers, psi refers to um, degree of advancement advancement of of the reaction right so it tells you how much of the reaction has proceeded depending upon how much elemental change in the number of moles has been affected for each of the species okay so now you you divide the uh, divide the above equation uh, by volume that means you now look at whatever is happening per unit volume V uh, right so N over V is equal to C which is the molar concentration molar concentration therefore dn over v is equal to dc um, and uh, and uh, look at the time rate of change right that is to say dn over dt for unit volume is essentially dc over dt right now this is very significant here ultimately what we are looking at is the rate of change the time rate of change of concentration of a species of any species okay so of course when you are now saying n it means the total number total total number of moles uh, but we could, you could if you put a subscript i that refers to the number of moles of species i yeah so you could do the same thing for any of those um, therefore we can now do this for all of these that means we divide the entire set of equations by volume and then take the time rate of change in each case then uh, you now get dc1 over dt divided by New one double prime minus new one single prime equals DC two over DT uh, divided by new two double prime minus new two single prime, etc. For the general case of the ith species, DC i over DT divided by new i double prime minus new i single prime up to DC n over DT divided by new n double prime minus new i single prime, new n single prime. Uh, so what what happens finally, right? So you now have a d psi over dt divided by volume, right? So so you now have uh, okay. So this is what we would like to call as omega, which stands for the reaction rate right in in that sense the reaction rate is a term that is common to a reaction all right it's you now give a, you are given a reaction that means it will have a reaction rate okay what is it the rate of well, what are we trying to measure out of this actually it is something that is common to all the species strictly speaking what we should be asking or um, be interested in is what is the rate of production or depletion of a particular species okay that is given by dc1 by dt dc2 by dt etc and therefore dc1 by dt will be nu1 double prime minus nu1 single prime times omega 
and so on for each of those species right so that's that's is that so you, you have like a common um, quantity reaction rate from which you will now get the rate of production or depletion of the individual species that's how that's how we try to go about doing this so what does this really mean it's essentially a volumetric time rate of change of the degree of advancement of the reaction so that the reaction rate essentially means a uh, the, the rate of change of the degree of advancement of the reaction per unit volume so keep in mind there are two things about a reaction rate this is very very important for you to think about all the time whenever you are bringing in reactions into picture the reaction rate is coming is going to come into picture and, and correspondingly the rate of production or depletion of individual species it is always per unit time per unit volume okay it is volumetric rate volumetric means per unit volume rate means per unit time okay so these these two things are always there and typically uh, in SI units uh, if you are interested in putting this in things like mass balance and so on we are always looking at measuring this in terms of kilograms per second per meter cubed right that that's that's what we are we are, we are looking at we are beginning to look at at the moment of course we are now having a omega here which is essentially looking at the change in the number of moles per unit time so this this moles per unit time per unit volume it's not it, it's not yet kilograms right so that means we have to now throw in a molecular weight so you can't do that for a common reaction rate uh, the reaction rate that's common to all the reactions you could do so for the individual species because individual species will have individual molecular weights so you can throw in molecular weights for individual species to convert the rate of change of number of moles of those species to the rate of change of mass of those species right that is what we will do ultimately uh, but but I am just trying to tell you what what is all coming ahead uh, and what are the important things that we have to keep thinking about so so uh, so if you now keep that along with that line uh, so in general um, we can say uh, DCI over DT if this is actually omega i this is the rate of production or depletion should in fact we should say net rate of production or depletion of uh, species i right species i net rate of production of I will explain why we are saying net in a few minutes essentially what you are thinking is not just um, one reaction here we will now try to have a sequence of reactions in which a species could be produced in one reaction it could be consumed in another reaction okay so there is like a net rate of production of depletion so that is what that is what the word net would mean and we will see this a little bit more explicitly but essentially what we are now saying is therefore uh, omega i is nu i single prime double prime minus nu i single prime times omega okay so where are we we are supposed to in this framework we should now be able to write out the law of mass action so the law of mass action the law of mass action states that right I am not going to write long sentences like you go through in high school that is a difference now states simply that omega equal to k pi i equals 1 to n c i to the nu i single prime this is what you have actually learnt in high school okay now it is all put in algebraic form so this simply means that the so long as you use a nu i single prime as the exponent over there to c i what it simply means is the the rate of reaction the common quantity for all the species that are participating in a reaction yeah is equal to 
a what's what's called as a rate constant or a specific rate constant. Okay, it's it's not a constant. We will now expand on that a little bit more. Uh, time, but it's like a proportionality constant. So effectively, you are saying the rate of reaction is proportional to the concentrations of the reactants raised to their stoichiometric coefficients. Right. So when you say reactants, that means you are looking at new I single prime. Keep in mind you are taking like a product of all the all the species. So if some of the species are actually products, the new I single primes for them will be zero. Therefore, they don't really contribute. You you now have Ci to the new I single prime for them to be equal to one, and therefore you don't you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. So it's it's it's, it's pretty general expression there. And the next thing that I would like to point out is uh, K uh, here. K is equal to a e to the minus e uh, over r u t. Uh, sometimes there is a subscript a to e here, so to to indicate its activation energy, but it's essentially activation energy there. Uh, so e to the uh, exponential e to the exponential to the negative e over r u t. R u stands for universal gas constant. Right, in the Arrhenius. So this is the this is what is called as the Arrhenius Arrhenius law. The Arrhenius law um, essentially gives you the temperature dependence of the rate constant, well, or this or rate, rate constant is also called specific reaction rate. Okay, uh, it is essentially the reaction rate for unity. Concentrations of the reactions, the reactants. Um, so that's why it's called specific reaction rate, but it's also called the rate constant. But it's not really a constant. It depends on the temperature, and the Arrhenius law essentially gives you the uh, temperature dependence. You could also write this if you want to now include um, uh, many times, many times, k equals b. T power m e to the minus e over r u t is also used. Is also used. That means there is a polynomial dependence of the rate constant on temperature. That's t to the m, and there is a exponential dependence on temperature. Okay, so. The exponential dependence obviously is a lot stronger dependence when compared to the polynomial dependence. So sometimes you could you could tend to ignore it and say let's not worry about the polynomial dependence. Let's simply say take it as a to the minus e over rt, right? And uh, that there, there you are taking in only the exponential dependence. The exponential dependence is the biggest problem with combustion. So what we are actually now going through is in some sense like the is one of the biggest tumbling blocks in solving combustion problems. Okay. The exponential dependence is a highly nonlinear dependence. Okay. So essentially this is what and depends depending upon the value of E and typically when the value of E is larger and larger the nonlinearity the nonlinear dependence of uh, K or the reaction rate in general. On temperature becomes uh, more and more nonlinear. Okay, so it becomes very very sensitive temperature. That means it, it doesn't change over a fairly wide range of temperatures, but you now cross a certain threshold temperature, it just goes boom. And what that means is we should now be able to capture this variation within that very 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 small uh, change in temperature. Because because the, the suddenly changed. Until then, you don't have any reactions happen, significantly speaking, right? And all of a sudden, you have all the reactions happening. Okay, so there are very uh, quick changes that keep happening in space or in time, depending upon whether you're looking at unsteady problems or uh, or or both. Okay, so you typically also have a spatial very spatial resolution issue because of these things, and this poses a uh, what's called mathematically what's called as a stiff 
situation so because when you are now looking at convection in a flow and then you have a flame and then suddenly when you go to the flame you are now having a, a sudden increase in temperature right and so long we have not been having such a high variation in temperature so you, you are okay with resolving the temperature over larger distances and then suddenly over here where the flame is you now have to resolve very very close and, and, and now begin to keep track of these fast changes in temperature if you were to do the same thing over there it is sort of like there is hardly much change so you are, you are wasting your time doing that okay so like for example if you do computational methods you, you would want to take like a very coarse grid relatively speaking uh, over there but when you get to the flame you want to now suddenly have a very fine grid but you are supposed to find out where the flame is and therefore you should be you should adapt your grid and stuff so it is it is difficult right so typically you now have a much different length scale for combustion than for reactions so if in the same equation as we will see uh, both the reactions and the convective processes occur and they are happening at two different length scales it is very difficult to resolve both of them for the for, with, with the same scale right and that is typically what is called as a mathematically stiff problem and you will get into these stiff problems primarily coming out of this here right so we are, we are just beginning to get into the uh, gory details of combustion if you will yeah there okay so let me just uh, box this for you to make it look good uh, one of the things that I would like to say is whenever you are dealing with the Arrhenius law you are always using the universal gas constant never make a mistake never have any confusion about this okay so typically when you are busy writing an exam you are like do I use the specific gas constant or the universal gas constant well what do you do now no Arrhenius always uses the universal gas constant okay so this is something that you are always keep in your mind when you are doing like back of the envelope calculations exam problems and so on okay second point in this course we are now take going to take these as laws that means we are not going to ask how we got these okay how are you going to how did you get these did experiments yeah I guess yeah so somebody actually took beakers poured things stirred up and started measuring things is that how is that how they figured yes that is that is true they did that okay plus you could also have a quantum mechanical basis for this for example uh, this is what is called as a A or B okay so now you can call this pre exponential exponential factor pre exponential factor right so from quantum mechanics we will be able to find out that this actually depends on probability of what is called as effective collisions okay so what is meant by effective collisions uh, what it really means is you need to have molecules that collide actually come in at a particular orientation with respect to each other so it is it's, it's, it's like you have a molecule that means it has a bunch of atoms in a particular arrangement you have another molecule of atoms its atoms in a particular arrangement when you now have a reaction that is going on it is one atom of this molecule and another atom of the other molecule that are the ones that are actually exchanging electrons and creating bonds there and then disrupting other bonds there right that means when they collide you need to have this particular atom of this molecule collide with that particular atom of that molecule that means they should be oriented in particular ways right and the probability with which they would orient in those particular ways is 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 less when compared to uh, if you didn't have to worry about the or orientation right so all that stuff is buried in uh, the pre exponential factor okay so you can derive these things from uh, quantum mechanical basis and uh, a, a, a good graduate course would do this right or we would have a uh, uh, we, we have another course like physical gas dynamics where you can actually go through all these things yeah so that that is typically taught uh, in the art semester uh, that is that, that, like the ongoing semester now so you, you can sit in a course there where, where we can learn all these things but in this course 
uh, we are now going to keep on adopting the continuum approach that means at a particular point you have a temperature that is defined you have a concentration that is defined and based on the concentrations the reaction rates are going to be determined and based on the temperature there the, the reaction rate constant is going to be determined by given, given by these laws. In reality at every point in space where you, you have reactions happening you have like millions of molecules that are bombarding each other and going through reactions we are not resolving that level of detail yes. We do not want to define that in this course. Right. So one of the things that we go through in chemistry is something like a hill that you have to cross and then there is like a height of the hill that is activation energy we do not want to worry about all that stuff okay. So because of this mathematically speaking you will also face a problem in thinking about ignition because if this is your think about this if this is your k you now plug this in k and then you now get your omega right and plug the omega in um, here you get the omega i which is the rate of production of a particular species right. Now let us suppose that we have a methane oxidation reaction that you are thinking about and let us do something very sinister right this is something that I always do. Uh, fill up this room with methane yeah and of course we have some oxygen otherwise we would not be breathing here right what is going to happen are there reactions going on or not I just filled up this room with a decent amount of methane are there reactions going on oxygen is there right according to this yes <laughs> right so of course we have air conditioning and all those things so the temperature here may be like about what 20 degree C right so you are looking at like let me plug in uh, 293 K over there right you will now get some value for different values of A E and so on and uh, you plug in plug it in there I will tell you what the concentration of the methane is what the concentration of oxygen is plug it in there and then you know the, the, the reactions the new I double prime and new I single prime then you can find out the rate of production of carbon dioxide or rate of production of water or rate of product depletion of methane all these things right you will find some values which are non-zero what do you do that means you just fill in some methane in here reactions are going to go, go on hey that is dangerous huh? what is happening I have not yet ignited that means we do not have a flame that is propagating we are not burning yet right and we are still at 293 Kelvin 20 degree C so but, but there are reactions going on any, any idea of this number like what, what would be your omega that would be extremely low 10 to the minus 14 minus 15 that kind of thing for room temperatures okay. So from a mathematical point of view what this actually means and we will relate this to what is called the cold boundary difficulty okay uh, that means we really strictly speaking cannot identify reactants as completely reactants okay because even as they are just being reactants they strictly speaking in principle should be reacting and producing products at a very 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 minuscule rate according to this right it becomes numerically significant when the temperature rises past a value that is like related to E over R or U okay that is what this means then you begin to have values that are significant the heat release that is significant it begins to hurt us okay and then we get burnt <laughs> okay. Uh, so keep this in mind we are not going to worry about what E means to us except to point out that the value of it is going to dictate the nonlinearity of the reaction rates dependence on temperature okay that is what we want to 
worry about as far as we are concerned. Okay. Typically, when you have a full-fledged reaction that's going on, and you think that you have a flame there, the reaction rates are very high. Of, of, of the order of, um, it could be even ten to the ten. Right. So we are, we are now going from one end, to like ten to the minus ten to ten to the ten. So that, that's another thing. So as I told you, we are we are not only having like a very narrow region over the steep rise happens but the steep rise happens over a huge range. So you have to capture this numerically you know that the values that is very difficult so that is that is the, the biggest problem as far as combustion is concerned the chemistry that is that is thrown in there the exponential dependence of the reaction rate on temperature is the biggest villain in chemistry okay that, that, that makes the whole problem highly nonlinear and very stiff. So, uh, so I, I guess I can't emphasize uh, enough about about this, but we'll just move on, and then we now say for a system of reactions, for a system of reactions. So, how do you write a system of reactions? You now say sigma i equals one to n nu i k single prime mi gives sigma i equals 1 to n nu i k double prime mi k equal to 1 to m. So capital M indicates the number of reactions that you are going to have right in a scheme of reactions and each of those reactions then the kth reaction will be identical to any of the single reactions that we have seen before okay except we now want to identify the stoichiometric coefficients with the kth reaction as well as the ith species. So we now say it, it does two subscripts new, new ik single prime and new double new ik double prime these now become like matrices okay. So this, this then means that you are looking at a multi step reactions reaction sequence why would you worry about a system of reactions or a multi step chemistry the reason is as I, as I told you some time back a species that is produced in one reaction could be consumed in another reaction. So the net production the, 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 the net rate of production of uh, or, or depletion of a species will now be dependent on what, 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 how much is produced in each of the chemical reactions right so that is that is what we are going to keep keep track of so so we have for for a, for a, for a system of reactions um, notated by this uh, we have omega k we now have the the common quantity reaction rate now specific for the kth reaction okay so the kth reaction the reaction rate for the kth reaction is equal to kk pi I equals one to n C I new omega I K single prime. Okay, and that's equal to A K e to the minus E K over R U T pi I equals one to n C I new I new I K. single prime right well if you want to do, do one more bk t t to the mk e to the minus ek over rut pi i equals 1 to n ci to the new ik single prime. So look at what is going on we are now having a, a sudden uh, explosion of the number of parameters that we have to consider okay. So previously I said these are going to be given to us okay so we now have a reaction 
you know what the new i single prime and new i double primes are so that was given to you so we are looking at what this was and that is given by this reaction that means we need to be supplied with these two values a and e okay if you now want to further take the polynomial dependence uh, of, of, of on temperature then you need to have b m and e okay so for a given reaction you need to be given b m and e these are what is called the kinetic parameters okay and the information on new i single prime and new i double prime is essentially giving you what the reaction is okay it is a capital N and what the script m i's are the new i and new i new, new i single prime and new i double prime is what is going to give you what the reaction is in the system of react, reactions your capital N capital M new the, the script M i's and the new i single primes new i k single primes and new i k double primes all this information gives you what is called as a reaction scheme the reaction scheme is nothing but a list of reactions okay so when you see the list of reactions you should be able to find out what is the capital N what is the total number of species okay and i going from 1 to n what are the species script m i and how many reactions are there capital M okay i k going from 1 to m what are the reactions that is given by that that will be identified by new i new i k single prime and new i k double prime or we should be able to deduce all those things given a scheme of reactions but that is only one part of the story that is only telling you what is the chemistry right this species took reacted with this species to produce that species and that else and then some of those species reacted with this blah 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 and then so you have a scheme then there is another part of the story so one thing is to actually figure out the chemistry the other thing is to actually figure out bk mk and ek for each of those kth reactions these are the chemical kinetic parameters okay so chemical kinetic parameters many times are quite difficult to measure and obtain even if you were to figure out the the the, the reaction scheme you see so what we and then most of the time the combustion expert or the combustion scientist tries to bank on the chemist to get give this information so you have to actually get get this information from a chemistry person first of all find out what the chemistry is that means what is the reaction scheme that will give you the uh, new i single k new i k single single prime new i k double prime script m i's for i go, going from cap 1 to capital N what is capital N and what, what is capital M all these things that is only the scheme in addition to this we have to get b k m k and e k these three parameters for each of the reactions that is that's, that's, that's a killer many times you, you get into your trip, uh, problem there so here uh, just to record whatever I am saying this is the uh, specific reaction rate um, of uh, kth reaction and uh, right now omega i remains the same as what we had before right omega i is the net rate of production or depletion of species i net rate of production or depletion of species i this will be equal to sigma k equals 1 to capital M omega i k so where omega i k is rate of production or depletion of the ith species in the kth reaction that means in every, every, every reaction 
you have some uh, rate of production or depletion of uh, each species right that is omega ik you sum over all the reactions to find out so, so in, in one reaction omega ik could be positive another reaction omega i could be negative if it is negative that means it is depleting there if it is positive it is being produced there you know add up all that stuff algebraically right you should now get the net rate of production of that particular species and that is what we will care about the reason we will care about that is because just like how we normally do a mass conservation okay in your fluid mechanics in addition to doing mass conservation for the mixture of species we will also now do a mass conservation for every species now obviously each of the species mass does not remain constant so to conserve does not mean it does not mean it is going to be a constant okay what it means is whatever is the rate of change of mass will be equal to the net rate of production or depletion that is what that is what we will do as we go along. So we will factor this in into the mass conservation equation of individual species as, as a next step so this is going to be very very important to us yeah so um omega i k then is equal to nu i k double prime minus nu i k single prime omega k that is like the multi step version of this over here right we did we did this only for one reaction we now do this for the kth reaction and a multi reaction step now we have to plug this back in here add over all the reactions to get the uh, rate, net rate of production of a particular species right so therefore omega i equal to this is nothing but dci over dt that remains the same there you see omega i is dci over dt right so dci over dt that is equal to sigma k equals 1 to m nu i k double prime minus nu i k single prime omega k and omega k is v k t to the m k e exponential minus e e k over r u t pi j equals 1 to n I'm just using a different running variable just to avoid confusion c j to the nu j k single prime right what do we have here what do we have here you now say dc i over dt is equal to a lot of things all now put together so we just started learning something and then pretty soon we now have a all of them collapse together right in 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 in, in one one line and finally you now have a dc i over dt going all the way you have a pi j equals 1 to n c c j to the nu j k single prime okay which means this contains a product of all the species which are reactants right in the kth reaction and you now sum over all the k reactions so pretty much all species concentrations are now going to figure in here right as product in one term and then you are going to have many of those terms added up for each of the reactions right so you will now have dc i over dt for the ith species equal to one term plus another term plus another term and so on each of those terms is for each each reaction and each term contains products of species concentrations possibly of the same species for which we wrote the dc i by dt so two things are emerging here one the rate of change of concentration of species i depends on the concentrations of all species practically or in general that means 
you can't evaluate the constant rate of rate of change of concentration of species i independent of all other species you have to know the concentrations of all species to be able to find out what's the rate of change of this right this means you now have for this box you should be able to write i equals 1 to n that means this is actually n reactions for each species so n n equations for each species right and all these equations are simultaneous set of equations they are all coupled to each other because the rate of change of this is going to depend on all other concentrations to find out the rate of change of so, to, 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 so if you want to find out ci you now do a time integration of this right so if i were to give the concentrations that are initially present for a set of reactions right from there i should now be able to do a time integration so i now integrate this in time to go to the next next step next night time next next time okay during this time a lot of uh, species would have got consumed a lot of species would have got produced all those things are actually present over here that means I have to solve the next dc by dt for the next species and so on so all of them should be solved simultaneously so it is a simultaneous set of first order ordinary differential equations which we have to integrate in time simultaneously for all of them right this is the this is only the starting they are only scratching the surface here now look at the nature of these equations the nature of the equations is first of all these are highly nonlinear not because of the hue and cry that I made about the temperature dependence that is the nonlinearity in the temperature dependence that is showing up here okay in each of these terms that is bad enough that is that is something that I will come to next okay the nonlinearity is because you now have each of these ci's is an unknown you have to solve for simultaneously and these unknowns are actually showing up as products right so anytime you have products of unknowns you have nonlinear equations right and not only that even if they did not show up as products they are raised to possibly a non unity exponent right so anytime you have like a square or cube or uh, minus 0.1 anything other than 1 is non linear <laughs> okay so linear is only one thing which is like 1 okay non linear means anything else right that is going to screw up your your day and making make it non linear right so you already have a non linear set of first order ODEs here and then on top of this we will have to find out in reality in, in real combustion applications we would not know what the temperature is okay and the temperature keeps changing from place to place or time to time or both place and time that means we have to now have a, another equation that governs temperature and that equation also will be coupled with this equation because in order to solve that equation you needed to know what was the heat that was produced by these reactions to change the temperature and we will see that as we go along and in order for you to solve this know this so solve this equation you need to know the temperature so in addition to this n equations that are getting coupled you will also have an energy equation that gets coupled with this okay because the temperature is coupled to the species and the species are coupled to the temperature okay but if you are given temperature it is possible for you to so let us say you are now taking like a, a, a bath that is now uh, maintained at a particular temperature and you wanted to know what should be the concentration of species that are produced given an initial set of species this is this is an initial value problem because it is a ODE in time right that means you can integrate in time given initial conditions for the concentrations of the species you should now be able to advance in time so if given temperature the energy equation gets decoupled from this set of equations but in, in a real practical problem you will have both of them coupled and this becomes a nasty set of equations uh, as it is without even worrying about convection and diffusion of species yet. So we are now beginning to uh, 
begin to look, look at combustion like right it just becomes gory and gory by the minute from from here on see you tomorrow <laughs>